Sandega and I'm one of the authors on a paper describing cross-reactivity in 501YV2 elicited plasma. So a lot of new variants have been circulating from about October last year and these are all SARS-CoV-2 variants um, which have mutated from the original Wuhan strain. But unfortunately, it wasn't known whether the 501YV2 variant elicits a potent neutralizing response during infection, or maybe it was blind to the immune response and the immune system wasn't able to see it. People didn't know the answer to that question. Another question was the extent to which antibodies that are elicited by 501YV2 infection, whether they're able to cross-react with other circulating variants such as the original variant that infected people in South Africa, which had a mutation at the point of 614. Um, it, was, it used to be a D, and then it changed to a G, and that was the most common um, variant in South Africa in the first wave of infections. So the implications for the, uh, for the study would be the ability to uh, make second-generation vaccines or boosters that are able to protect against an infection by both the original variant as well as all the different other emerging uh, lineages. So we set out to answer this question. We had a cohort of um, 89 individuals who were all hospitalized in Cape Town. They were all in hospital from December to January um, of this year. So December 2020 to January 2021. And at that time, the 501YB2 variant was the most dominant variant that was circulating over 90% of infections were due to this new variant. We were able to sequence a subset of these 89 individuals and all this, the individuals that we sequenced did actually have um, 501YV2 confirmed infection. So definitely the majority at least of our cohort was infected with a 501YV2 variant. So the first thing we wanted to see, does this variant actually elicit any sort of antibody response? And the answer is yes. We saw binding responses as well as neutralizing responses elicited by 501YV2 infection. What was the most interesting study um, part of the study that we did was actually see cross-reactivity. So when you test plasma that's elicited from the original variant, that 614G variant, and you test it against the 501YV2 virus, there's very limited cross-reactivity the original variant plasma isn't able to neutralize the new variant. But what about if we flip and do the reverse experiment? So here we had 501YV2 elicited plasma. We tested it against 501YV2. We saw um, it was able to bind and neutralize to the variant. And then we also tested it against the original variant virus and it was able to neutralize. So there was cross reactivity between 501YV2 elicited antibodies and the original variant. We took it a step further and looked at a subset of samples, which um, subset of samples and tested them against the 501YV3 variant, also known as P1. This is a variant that was first described in Brazil. And again, we saw cross reactivity. Plasma that was elicited by 501YV2 infection was able to um, cross neutralize with the P1 501YV3 variant. So what are the implications of the study? What does it all mean? Well, there's two things. If you've been affected with 501YV2 and you um, produce a very robust antibody response, you may be protected from infection from other variants, so from the original variant and the P3 variant. We're still testing other variants to see if this holds true. But remember, this only lasts as long as your antibody response is present. Antibody responses still wane. We're also going to test to see if it wanes as fast for 501YV2, but at the moment we don't know. The other implication of the study is that if we made a vaccine or a booster vaccine based on the 501YV2 variant, we could be able to have cross protection. So if you have a vaccine that's a, that is based on the 501YV2, we may be able to protect against a range of the different variants. And um, this is different from the vaccines that are currently in market. So for the original variant, the vaccines are based on the original variant. And what we see is that there's a decrease in potency for the 501YV2 variant for these existing um, vaccines. Some of them are better than others, 
but what we're hoping for is that this 501YV2 would be a better universal vaccine. So I hope you enjoy the paper and please send us feedback and let us know what you think. Thank you.